Hi everyone, this is Frank here with Die Hard RC Addicts, and today's video is sponsored by Hobby King. Welcome to part two of the Hobby King SK450 quadcopter. If you missed part one, the build, you can watch it by clicking on the link to the right on the video. For those of you who are like myself and building and setting up your first quadcopter, or if you're just new to the KK2 board and need help setting it up, I've decided to put a menu in here so it'll make it easy for you to click on the links to find what you're looking for. In this section we're going to be going over the equipment setup. This is making sure that the radio is set up right, the receiver is all plugged in correctly, and the motors are all spinning in the right direction. You'll need to set up your radio transmitter for a normal airplane without any mixing. You'll also want to set your sub trims and your regular trims to zero or to the neutral position. I found with my RDS 8000 Airtronics radio that I had to have the elevator and the aileron set at reverse on the throws and the throttle and the rudder were set at normal. That may vary depending on what radio you're using but that's what worked on mine. Once you have the transmitter set up and bound to the receiver you're going to need to test all the motors and ESCs individually to make sure they're spinning in the correct direction. You can either use the radio transmitter and receiver and plug them each one of them individually into the throttle channel and run them up to make sure they're spinning in the correct direction or you can do like I did and use a servo tester and plug them into the ESCs. So starting with motor number one, which is the one on the left hand side on the front, you're going to want this one spinning clockwise. So if it's not spinning the right direction, swap two of the wires on the ESC to make sure it's turning the right way. Motor number two is the one on the right at the front, and this one needs to be spinning counterclockwise. So again, just check and make sure if you have to swap the wires, swap them. Motor number three is at the back on the right hand side and this one needs to be turning clockwise. Motor number four is on the left hand side at the back and this one needs to be turning counterclockwise. Once you have all the motors turning in the right direction we can plug in all the ESCs and the receiver wire leads. The wires from the receiver plug into the KK2 board in the order of aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, and then the fifth one is an auxiliary channel. I used my gear channel and this is going to be used to turn on and off the auto leveling in the KK2 board. All four of the ESC wires are going to plug into the right hand side bank and they're going to go from motor 1 to motor 4 in that sequence and it's number 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now that we have all the equipment basically set up, it's time to move on. In this section of the video we're going to be covering the basic setup of the KK2 board. Before arming the control board you want to make sure that you take all four of the props off the quadcopter for safety reasons. To arm the KK board properly you want to turn on the radio transmitter first then plug in the battery and wait for all of the four ESCs to initialize. Once you hear all four of them have uh, done their initialization beeps, then you can go into the menu. The enter button is going to be the one all the way to the right. It boots up in the safe mode, so you want to hit this button to get into the menu. Um, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see what's on the menu. Now that we're zoomed in, we're going to go ahead and go through the basic setup of the KK2 board. I'm not going to cover everything that's available in this menu, so we're going to go ahead and set up what's necessary to get the quadcopter flying. Alright, so the first thing we're going to see is the PI editor. We're going to come back to that one. So the first thing we're going to do here is scroll down till we get to load motor layout, and we're going to hit the enter button to get into that sub menu. And then once we're in this menu, we can search for the type of quadcopter that we're setting up. So we want to hit the down button till we find the quad X configuration. All right, here it is, quadcopter X mode. Hit enter to select it. It asks if you're sure, hit yes. And now you're set up for a quad X configuration. And here it shows you the motor layout as far as what direction they're supposed to be turning. So if we hit the next button, it'll show you each individual motor. This is motor one, it's showing clockwise motor 2 counterclockwise, motor 3 clockwise, and motor 4 counterclockwise. So you want to make sure that all your motors are turning in those directions in order for it to fly correctly. We're going to go ahead and hit the back button and it brings us back to the sub menu and hit it back again and we're back into the main menu. And from here we're going to scroll up till we get to receiver test. We're going to go ahead and hit the enter button. 
and that will take you into the menu for dialing in your sub trims on your radio and also for checking the direction to make sure that is correct so first I'm going to move the sticks around to make sure that directions are showing correctly so I've got right aileron and it's showing right I've got left aileron and it's showing left I've got forward elevator back elevator those are correct if any of these things are reading wrong then you need to go into your radio and reverse the direction of that servo the throttle one is fine it's set to zero I don't want to mess with that um, it's set at idle which is correct and the rudder let's test the rudder left is correct right is correct again like I said if any of those are wrong you want to reverse the throw on the servo in the radio menu um, your transmitter menu Okay, the next thing you want to look at here are the numbers next to the aileron, elevator, throttle, and rudder. They should all be reading zero. If they're not, you need to get into your radio and use your sub trim to zero them out. When they're all zero, everything is good, and you can hit the back button. Now we're just going to scroll down and take a quick look at stick scaling. Think of this as kind of like the rates on your radio transmitter. The higher these numbers are, the more responsive the quadcopter will be. If you're into doing like stunts and stuff like that, then you probably want to set the numbers pretty high to make it very responsive but if you're going to be using it for like a camera platform or if you're a beginner like me you're going to want to keep the numbers low um, right now they're pretty low so I'm just going to leave them alone I just wanted to show you guys what it was so let's go ahead and back out of this the next thing we're going to do is calibrate the ESC's so we're going to scroll down till we find ESC calibration and this is basically going to give you a set of instructions at first and in bold letters it says make sure that you take the props off because um, it could be dangerous if you don't. Next it says check the throttle direction in the receiver test menu. Reverse if necessary. Alright, we've already done that, so we're going to hit continue. Here it says to memorize the rest of the instructions because the next step is to turn off the power. Once you've scrolled through the rest of the instructions and memorized them, the last one is going to say continue and it'll take you back to the main menu and you can go ahead with the calibration. Okay, to do the actual calibration, you're probably going to need somebody to help you. You're going to first unplug the battery, and then you want to turn on the transmitter and move the throttle stick all the way to the maximum position. Then you're going to want to hold down button number one and button number four and have your helper plug in the battery. And you should get a confirmation beep after a few seconds. All right, then you can move the throttle all the way down to idle and you'll get another confirmation beep and you can let go alright it sounds like all the ESC's are armed now we're ready to do a throttle check in order to do this we need to get the KK2 board out of the safe mode and into the armed mode you want to move your throttle stick over to the bottom right hand side and it for a couple seconds and it'll arm the KK2 board it should say armed on here and the red LED light should light up and now you're ready to test the throttle um, what you're looking for here is you want to make sure that all of the motors are synchronized and they start up at the same exact time so move the throttle up slowly and make sure that all the motors are starting up at the same exact time the other thing you want to look for here is to make sure that you have your rotation set correctly on the motors that the ones that are supposed to be ro rotating clockwise are rotating clockwise and the counter rotating one should be turning the other direction alright everything looks good so we're gonna go ahead and get back into the program mode alright to save your settings and to get back in the menu you want to move the throttle stick all the way over to the left hand side at the bottom and it should go back into the safe mode and you can click on the menu button and get back in the menu okay if for some reason your motors are not all synchronized and not starting up at the same time you can adjust this in the miscellaneous settings if you click on this to enter at the top it says minimum throttle setting the default is set at 10 I actually had to crank mine up to 20 to get all the motors to start up at the same time so you just play around with that number until you get it set where you like it alright let's go back to the menu from here we're gonna scroll up to mode settings hit enter and here it shows your self leveling set at stick in order to use an auxiliary channel you're going to want to change this to auxiliary you hit the change button and it switches it the next one down is I of PI and it's set to on right now I'm going to leave that alone for the moment 
Below that is arming. This is how the system arms and is set to stick. This is a safety so that your props don't accidentally run up if you bump the throttle. And I would leave it at that if you're running any kind of multi-rotor. If you're flying an airplane, you can probably turn it off so that way it arms automatically every time you turn the system on. The last one at the bottom here is link roll pitch and it links the roll and pitch settings of the PI together so that if you move one, the other one moves as well. That way they're always the same. I would leave this on yes. All right, let's go back into the main menu. Next, we're going to do the sensor calibration. Um, hit enter, and this is going to give you instructions on how to calibrate the sensors for the self-leveling feature. Basically, you want to make sure that the quadcopter is sitting on a nice flat and level surface. You want to check it with the bubble level or something to make sure that it's 100% level. Um, and then hit the continue button and it should start the calibration. All right, what it's doing now is it's figuring out this attitude for what's going to be as the default level. When the, you hit that switch on your transmitter, it's going to bring it to that position. So you want to make sure that you're definitely on a level surface. All right, we're going to hit continue and it says calibration succeeded. Hit continue again and we're back to the main menu. Now we're going to do a sensor test. So go to sensor test, hit enter, and it's going to show you if all the sensors are okay. It'll say okay next to them. If you see any of them that say not okay, then you have a problem with the board and it would probably need to be replaced. But all of these are saying okay, so all the sensors are in good shape. So hit back and we're back to the main menu. Okay, there's only a couple more things I want to go over before we get into doing some flight testing. We're going to go all the way back to the PI editor first. These are the stock settings in here, 150, 100, 50, and 20. And I've been doing some research on the RC forums. RC groups in particular has a really large forum on there. I'll put a link in the video information bar below the video so you can check it out. Um, from what I've been getting on there, they're saying that these are settings are okay for if you're running a hexcopter or a, a octocopter. It would probably work okay. But for quadcopters and tricopters, these settings are pretty high and will cause the quadcopter to fly pretty unstable. We're going to go ahead and change the settings here. So if you push down on the button, it brings the number up. And we're going to bring this down to around 45. I believe that's what it said in the forums was a good number for quadcopters. So set this to 45. Hit done. And then we're going to leave the P limit alone. 100 is supposed to be good for the P limit, but they're saying that for the I gain, you want to set that at about somewhere between 50 to 100 percent of the P gain. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this one down to around 20, I think should probably be good. Let's see. Um, we can uh, fine tune this when we get the quadcopter outside. Or actually, let's go with the 25. All right, hit done. And for the I limit, it's set at 20. I'm going to leave that one alone as well. So that pretty much sets the gains for both the roll and the pitch. Now we need to scroll back up to the top so we can switch the yaw. So if you hit change, it'll bring it over to elevator. Hit it one more time, and it'll bring it to the yaw, the rudder. I've already changed it in here. I have it set for the P gain at 60, and the I gain is 30. I left the P limit and the I limit alone at 20 and 10. Again, I did 50% of what the P gain was for the I gain. So originally the P gain was at 90, so I brought it down to 60. And the I gain, I brought it down to 30, which is half of what the P gain is. All right, we're done setting the gains. Let's go ahead and back out of this. We've got one more thing to look at, and that's the self-level settings. If we go into here, you can see that I have the P gain and the P limit set to 60, and the I gain and the I limit set to zero. The settings that are in here determine how much control you have over the quadcopter when you're flying it in the self-level mode. The higher the numbers are set, the more control you'll have over the quadcopter. The lower they're set, the less control you'll have. I suggest definitely for the first flight to set the numbers up a little bit higher because um, the quadcopter may veer one way or the other until you get it set up correctly. So I've got mine set at 60 and 60 and I'm going to back out of here. I've got my props balanced and they're back on the quadcopter. So setup is complete and it's ready to go out and do some testing and tuning and the initial test flights. But we're going to save that for part three coming up here pretty soon. So please stay tuned guys. And I want to say thanks to all of you for watching part two of the SK450 quadcopter. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Hobby King for sponsoring this video. 
See you guys again soon here on Die Hard RC Addicts.